Okay. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to I'm going to go over that PowerPoint, the evaluating sources PowerPoint, and go through that. What your tips and helpful pieces for you when you're evaluating sources? Okay. So I'm going to go through that, talk through that, so you have an understanding kind of um, what you need to be doing and how you need to be doing it. Okay, because it's going to come up real quick next week of when your proposals do. All right, so your proposal will not have any kind of any kind of implication on your sources. So you could even write a proposal now without doing any kind of research. Okay, I'm just going over this now because I know some of you have already started that researching process because remember what we did last on Tuesday. I asked you to do your thinking. I asked you to do your um, just thinking about what your what your research is going to look like, where it's going to go, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to go. I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to talk through that, and I am going to give you probably the most. Someone needs to mute their mic, please. So, and then I'm going to give you some time to sort of think about your proposal, and then before we before we depart this evening and I'm going to need to get out of here just a little bit early. So we're going to we're going to end around 630, 635 instead of 645. So I need to I need to jump off of here quickly and, and get to another appointment. So um, we'll sort of balance our time with that. But I'm going to I'm going to show and go and, and share my PowerPoint here if. I can get there. No, nope, that's not it. Uh, So I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk through this just a little bit. And I just want to make sure we're understanding and we're clear about what evaluation of sources looks like. Um, I went to the University of Wisconsin. Well, I didn't go there. I, I found some resources and I didn't. I just I just got those resources and I synthesized the information and I put it into a PowerPoint because I thought it would, would be would be easier for you to use in sort of one composite place as opposed to having to go around and sharing links and all of that sort of thing. So I want to go through this PowerPoint. I want to talk through some pieces, give you a chance to ask some questions and we'll sort of go from there. So the why is the why why do we want to why do we want to know if sources are credible or not or not? And remembering that credibility is context. Medicine is changing every day. If you're doing something in medicine, if you're doing something in um, anything in the medical field, nursing, any any kind of medical research, know that that's going that's the, that that kind of research changes daily. My sister works at Duke Med in Durham, North Carolina, Duke University, and she works in neuromedicine, neuroscience, and she literally says that is the absolutely tr absolute truth because they've got so many people doing medical research in different kind of um, subject areas or different kind of um, fields. So know that that changes. I just want I just want everyone to be a, to be aware that credibility is really important. We're going to stay away from Wikipedia. I said sort of said this in the beginning of our time together. Dot edu. Dot org. Dot gov or that that's the most reliable website websites out there not saying there's some dot coms that are not not reliable because they are but I just want us to be just want us to be conscious of what's credible and what's not again I kind of talked about this um think about unreliable sources as pollutants to your credibility pollutants meaning something that's diluting it something that's making it not as clear as it should be um, and remembering unreliable sources also takes away from your work. So I, I just, just want to make sure that we're understanding what we're doing and how we're doing it with, in terms of our research. <clears throat> how do I know if my sources are credible, reliable? The 5W framework, who's the author, the purpose, the content, does the source exist? What's the purpose or objectivity? 
and does the source compare to others? This is a really, really, really important slide. Because when you're thinking about the importance of credible sources, it's really, really important to make sure you're understanding the accuracy and the purpose. As I've said to you previously, if you have, if you find, if you're finding an academic art, art, uh, article, or if you found one, read the abstract first and make sure that that abstract has something in there that you might want to continue reading. And all of a sudden, you're reading that article. Yep, makes sense. I can use it. Then go to that, go to the work cited of that article, and look and look and see what what resources that person used to write the article. I think that's really that's really important. So, the author and the purpose and kind of the um, is it is it accurate? I think that, that that's really important. And then the source, the motive, the authority, the review, and the two source test. I don't know that that's important. Um, I just think that that the the whole idea of the motive. Why do they say what they do? Um, meaning, why why are they using the source to begin with within their paper? Again, authority. Who wrote the story goes back to the author, which is goes back to um, this slide. So. These two slides kind of mirror one another. I like this slide better. I like the five W's framework better. <clears throat> but I'm just I'm just sharing this with you so you have an idea of kind of what different frameworks are out there so that you can use to look and unpack sources. Again, another framework you can use if you may if you find this better or this more relevant, please use it. Um, Timeliness of the information, please make sure that if you are using a source, it's not something that's more than 10 years old. But something that's more than 10 years old is really sometimes not very relevant to us. So make sure you look at the timeliness of your source, the relevancy, and then the accuracy. Again, we've seen, we've seen accuracy and authority twice here. So these are just three different frameworks that you can use and think about how does that fit into kind of the work that you're going to be doing, okay? So here's a little video that I found I'm going to share. And we'll let this ad get out of the way. Are we supposed to hear the video? Yes, you don't hear it? No. Oh, okay. Did you have it? Can you hear it in your email, in your, um, this, what I sent you? Let's see what's going on here. Well, my, my speakers are up. So let's get out of that. So let me do this. Can you read the? Can you hear the video on the what I shared to you? Can you hear it? Yes. You can. OK, perfect. So you can hear it on your end. OK, then I won't play it. So basically the three minute video is just telling you the whole idea of what is credible and why 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 credibility is important. OK, so if, if you can just um, listen to the video, watch the video on your own. That might help. OK. So I'm going to go back to my PowerPoint. I think I have one more slide. Um, yeah. So in summary, Professor, this, this is Raquel. She wanted to have a quick comment. Sure. 
Um, I just want to let you know with that three minute video, I cannot hear it, so I would need the interpreter there. So that might be an issue. OK, so um, Haley, how, how can you how will you do that? Like, is that something you can interpret with her on on the side? I mean, offline. Um, Raquel's asking if the video has closed captions. Uh, I will have to look and see. I don't. It it didn't. It didn't when I started sharing it. I I, I just checked. It does have closed captioning. Okay, perfect. Uh, okay. So, yes. Yes, if it has closed if it has closed captions, Raquel should be okay. She says. Got it. Um. Uh, also for Raquel, um, there's an extension in Google Chrome that she can activate and it has live transcription that could also help her um, maybe with a conversation with the professor and everything else on top of the translator. I can send it to her later after the class. Yeah, if you could send that, that'd be great. Thank you so much. All right, you're welcome. OK, so you have you have your 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 um, PowerPoint of evaluating sources. What do they look like? How are you going to use them? Thinking back to our lecture on Tuesday. So what I want to make sure we're doing. Is understanding the time and sort of the, the space in place to get this work completed. OK, so I'm going to go back to. The PowerPoint from. Tuesday. And. I want to go over that again. So I want, I want to make sure that we're clear here. Knowing that. Um, sort of our due dates, what 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 are our due dates look like? OK, because some of you have have challenges with meeting due dates. So the media analysis paper due today before our class starts, OK? The proposal is due next Thursday. Next Thursday. So I moved up our source evaluation until today. So our work on Tuesday and Thursday of next week is going to be looking at the literature review process and then you writing your proposal. OK, so I just want to make sure we're understanding and we're clear on kind of what the next week looks like for us. OK, so I moved I moved our source evaluation up to today. So we don't have that much of a lecture or that much information from me coming next week. It's going to be time for you to get this completed. Notice I have here in the bottom, which I'll have a lot of conferencing with me and writing and researching. So let me let me be clear. If we were meeting face to face, we would be doing the same thing. I would be giving students in class time to do this research writing. So just because we're online doesn't mean that I wouldn't give you time to do the researching that you needed to do and the conferencing that you needed to do with me. OK. Do you have questions? Raquel. So is the the PowerPoint that is due next Thursday and that is 500 words and then the proposal is for a later date. There's no PowerPoint due. It's only the proposal. OK, thank you for clarifying that. Sure. Anyone else?
Okay, it's 5:30. We're going. You're going to spend probably the next 45 minutes to 50 minutes. Let's say let's say 6:20. We'll come back at 6:20. And when we come back, I want us to make sure we're doing a couple of things because we're going to share out kind of what what do you, what do you see? What have you seen in your research? Is this something that's going to change your topic or not? And how do you see yourself moving towards putting the proposal together? So we're just going to have sort of a share out, sort of a, a brainstorm together to say, here is, here's what we're doing, or here's what I'm doing. This is what can help me, and so forth, okay? Any questions for me? Will we have a max uh, amount of sources? Um, Say it again. Will we have a maximum amount? Of you will sources? not have a maximum of sources. No. OK. But I will I will say to that. The more sources you have, the less writing you, you're going to do. And I don't want to I don't I don't want to see I don't want to see sources. I want to see your writing with sources infused in your argument. So. I think that's a good point to make, but I don't tell students you need five to seven, you need eight to 10. I will let you determine that, okay? okay. But just know that I don't wanna, I don't want all of that, I don't want all of your sources to be your paper. That makes sense. Yep. Thank you for that. I will have media analysis papers graded um, by Tuesday. So look for grades for your media analysis on Tuesday. And I don't think I have anything else other than we're going to meet back, let's say 620. Um, Ashley Hopper, did you get my email? I did. Do you want me to call you when we break from here? Um, that or you can call me now. When OK, we, so when we go. When I sort of uh, go offline here, you have my number, right? I do. Yeah. Okay, friends, 620, we'll come back and um, um, we'll go from there. Uh, professor, I never got the recording. That was in um, the PowerPoint that I shared. Okay, I got you. Thank you. Yep.